Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Marty K. Campbell, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It's good to be back for this special Friday episode. It is indeed. It is indeed. We've got a short, sharp and punchy episode for listeners today where we've taken a bunch of recommendations for resources. Uh, so we've asked the community, what are your investing resources? What do you use all the time? And we'll, we'll sh- give a shout out to you and, and to those resources on the show. So we've got those today. We're also going to talk about some of our own. So ha- we did, we've done similar episodes to this in the past. We've done like personal finance stuff. This is more on the investing side of things. Um, Kate, why don't you just jump right in? Who is the number one um, person to get back to us? And, and what did they recommend? Yeah. So the first one was from JB She in our Facebook community, and they were talking about their superannuation. And I'll just read their response here. Uh, Everybody adds to it and everyone will reap its returns. Hearing your episode on super really kickstarted my journey into researching about super funds, investment options, and eventually shares and ETFs. I hope people like me can start looking into their super and learn more about investments and wealth growth. And this was in response to our community call out and our giveaway in October for a copy of Daniel Crosby's The Laws of Wealth. So learning more about your super is a fantastic way to start your investing journey. And for many people, it does sort of lead you down the track of learning more about shares and ETFs. Once you go, hey, what's actually in my superannuation? What am I actually investing in? Mm. I was actually chatting to some mates last night, just over Facebook Messenger. We have a group and Somehow over the last week, after so many years, the conversation has turned to finance and uh, all of a sudden everyone's talking about super, everyone's saying my super does this, my super does that, is this good, is this bad, who is cheap, who is not. Um, And so it was just fantastic to see everyone talking about it. And because that started a conversation around, okay, well, what is super? And one of them said, isn't it just like the stock market? And I was like, yes, it's very similar. So yeah, I mean that if you start pulling on that thread, it can lead you to really interesting places. So great one there by JB Sheet. Number two come from Alan Michelle, also in the Facebook community, who called out Passive Investing Australia, saying it's the perfect resource if you're looking to start from the real beginning and learn what type of questions you should be asking yourself with regards to goals and risk. So Passive Investing Australia, Kate, have you checked this one out? Yeah, it's actually. I'm not sure who's behind it. I think it might be an anonymous website, but it's very um, matter of fact. It's very practical. It's just lays out all the information um, on different pages in a very sensible order. So if you read through that whole site, you'd have a pretty thorough understanding of all the basics when it comes to investing and dividends and how it all works. Mm, it's such a, there's so many great um, writers out there, bloggers, websites. Um, we've had a few on the show before. You've profiled plenty of them in uh, your fire course. So, so, so good. And um, if you want to learn, you can really get behind some of these, these writers and find the one that works for you. So Passive Investing Australia was from Ella. Number two there. Number three, Kate, um, this is an interesting one and one I know that you're a fan of. So I'll let you introduce this one. Yeah. For another member from our Facebook community, Tanu Patel, recommended the ASIC Money Smart website because it's available 24-7. It's based on facts and current policies, unbiased, reliable provides examples. Um, they also mentioned that if required, you can use the National Relay Service or the Translating and Interpreting Service to help, um, which is something if English isn't your first language, you can get some assistance there. And of course, it provides all those wonderful tools, calculators and resources, along with teaching material for teachers. So um, that was a fantastic recommendation, one that we love, I think we mentioned probably in every second episode. But If you just want a place to start and find some really unbiased foundations, it's a really good place to go. It doesn't go in too much depth. So you do need to learn and research further than that. But I think it gives you at least a starting point and you can kind of go, oh, I'm interested. Okay, I've heard a little bit about the ETFs. Now I want to 
further that journey. And at least you have a starting board to spring off that investigation. Yeah. So that's ASIC Money Smart. Um, fantastic website. And like you said, it does cover all the essentials really, really well. But I think the powerful thing is it also connects you to other things. So if, for example, you want to get in touch with a financial advisor, you can search the register. If you want to learn about compound interest, you can use those calculators and tools, the manage fund calculators for fees. There's so much on there. So that's um, a great resource. Number four comes from, and I hope I pronounce this right, X underscore Jordanary underscore chef um, at chef underscore Jordstan on Twitter. It basically gave us a few different categories of things to get started. So in podcasts, um, they recommend Equity Mates, the Get Started Investing Podcast, also known as GSI. We had Ren and Bryce on the show recently, and they talked about their new book, Get Started Investing, which matches the podcast. Fantastic. Uh, to learn more, there's a, what, another one called Invested with Phil and Daniel Town. Um, and of course, they say the Australian Investors Podcast and Australian Finance Podcast from us as top runners. On the subscription side, which is interesting, they said the AFR and Seeking Alpha. So if you're looking for Australian news and insights, AFR, if you're looking for global insights, Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha has been around for a very long time, Kate. It was actually you know, one of those places where you could just go and contribute stories back in the day where you could just be an investor and you could go and contribute some analysis on the company. And finally, in this other bucket, um, they've listed Simply Wall Street, which is an Australian-based uh, global um, kind of data and insights platform uh, started by Al Bentley up in Sydney and Self Wealth saying Self Wealth has great tools and statements. So yeah, great stuff all around. Kate, that's a that's a bit of a mouthful that one. We've got number five, which is a which comes from um, a listener also via Twitter. Remember, you can get in contact with us via Twitter, via Facebook, by Instagram, via email, any way you want to do that. What's the the fifth one from our listenership, Kate? The, the final one was from Ben Connolly at Ben P. Connolly on Twitter. And this might have been my favorite one because it's how I got started. But he said, it's going to be pretty plain and boring, but Google. Whenever I have a question or don't know what something means, I go straight to Google and ask that question. And personally, that is how I started my personal finance and investing journey. Just reading, I had Google things and just read the first 20 results and try and pull bits and pieces away. And it's how I came across like Mr. Money Mustache and the fire movement. It's probably how I discovered even the Money Smart website um, and led me to Twitter and connecting with all sorts of different people. So I think a lot of questions can be answered on Google really well. And Google's very good at pulling responses out of sort of popular articles. It's got those little like drop downs where it says, um, questions. So if you're wanting to learn more about an ETF, that's something like I'm Googling different ETFs every day to find their website and to find what dividends they pay and all of that kind of thing. So I think Google is your best friend, as long as you're willing to do a little bit of work to sort through different results. Mm, absolutely. Google is a fantastic engine for everything to do with finance. You can get um, you know, snippets, like you said, like those rich snippets, you can get access to blogs, news websites, it's all there to be found. Um, so you just got to just be mindful of the resources and, and make sure that you're getting the information from a trusted source. Don't necessarily just act like be a little bit discerning before you go and take whatever you read online or anywhere from anyone uh, as gospel. Go and yeah. go and um, do your own kind of you know, fact checking and whatever. And that's um, good advice okay. for any topic, not just finance. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I mean, we've talked about dieting on the show recently. If you just took the headlines um, of dieting fads and whatever, you'd probably be a very sick person today. So go in, actually get some well-rounded well research and, and do a bit of your own sleuthing there. Okay, Kate, we've got a couple of our own here that we wanted to throw into the mix here, top in, um, investing resources. Um, so maybe what we can do, because we've got a few to go through each, maybe what we can do is you go, I go. Yep. And yeah, I'll just hand it over to you. You go number one, then I'll go number one and so on and so forth down the list. Well, since AFR, the financial review has already been mentioned, I might skip over to ShareSight, which I think we've mentioned in our, might have mentioned in a personal finance resource video, but I think ShareSight's fantastic for investors because it brings all of the reporting for your portfolios together and you can automate sending um, contract notes across to it and it pop auto populates your portfolio. And it just makes it really easy when it comes to tax time. There's reports like future income generation reports. You can download portfolio diversification reports and you can 
for me who has a couple of different brokerage accounts, I can kind of link it all together under the one account and see the total portfolio and how that looks. So if I have US shares in one brokerage account, uh, ETFs in another, I can feed that all in and have a look at what my total portfolio construction looks like, how I'm diversified. Is there an area I have more assets allocated in than another? And is that actually what I want? So I think it's a good tool, especially as you're building up your investment portfolio. Yeah, that's share side. It helps you with your tax. It helps you with reporting. It's always good to look back on how your investing has actually gone. If, you've, if you're three years in and your investing hasn't been going that well, maybe you've got to make some changes. So good one. Uh, I'll just go, um, we've already mentioned this, but uh, uh, Twitter is a great place to communicate and collaborate. And uh, if you're new to Twitter, it can be a bit hard to, to find out who's who in the zoo. I found when I started, um, a really good way to do it was to actually find someone that I wanted to follow and see who they follow and then went through that list and then picked from that list of you know their feed who I thought was interesting. And that's how basically I started Twitter. Um, but so to give you some ideas to get you started on investing, some, some investors that I think are worth following because they provide interesting insights and because they um, typically do it regularly. So there's many great people on Twitter, but not everyone shares all the time, but here are some of those that do both. Uh, so we've got a down under value. Um, so at down under value, um, one of our writers, Lachlan, uh, Lachlan B. Jensen. So both of those actually, both of those people, VDU and uh, um, Lachlan write for us at Rest Media, which is fantastic. We're stoked. Um, at at Mega, that's at M-A-G-Y-E-R. Joe Mega has been on the Australian Investors Podcast a few times. Fantastic investor. At Finn Curator, at James Greenhall 20. Uh, I think he had his account. Um, someone tried to fake his account recently and <laughs> started messaging people. So you've got to be sure you're getting the right one. So we'll put links in the show notes. At 7 Amar. I was just going to say, that's a big problem on Instagram as well. A lot of the um, influencers like Tash, they have about 20 different uh, fake profiles created. So you have to be really careful. You're getting the, the verified one or the right one if they're not verified. Yeah, for sure. So at 7A Mahanti, I can put that in the, um, the show notes, but um, Anir Barn is actually my co-host for the weekly episode on the Australian Investors Podcast. Um, he, he writes for a, a, a business called Seven Investing. Um, so he's great too. Claude D. Walker and at Sage underscore Simeon. All of these um, people contribute regularly to Twitter. They all have different opinions. So it's good to follow them all, not just one of them. And um, you know, as always, even if they do talk about stocks, it's important to do your own research and, and think critically about all of that as well. So that's, a, that's just a little mini list of who I follow on Twitter and who I think is, is worth following here in Australia in the um, kind of the, the FinTwit sphere. Mm. And speaking of Twitter, the whole Seven Investing team and their website's a really good follow when they publish a lot of content on different yeah. industries in the United States and different companies there. So I certainly enjoy following them. And they, they even do Twitter spaces, which is sort of like, I don't know, it's a bit like Clubhouse. You can just jump in and listen to a live audio call. Uh, so that's quite fun as well. Yeah, for sure. They do a great, they're very innovative in that well, in that way. So um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, so what's, what's your number two, Kate? What's something you've, else you've got on your list? Well, the other one is reading and listening widely outside of my normal areas of interest. I spend a lot of time looking at finance material and law material, given that that's where I spend a lot of the time at the moment. But listening to podcasts and reading books that are focused on other industries and other areas is very helpful, especially in investing, because you want to be learning about new things and new concepts. And I think the best investors and the best fund managers we've spoken to have interests, quite strong interests outside of investing, or they've had done a degree in science or engineering. And that really feeds into the way they approach things. And even if you are interested in a couple of podcasts that really expand the areas you're looking at, invest like the best. It does say investing, but they do talk about a lot of other industries. Uh, Tim Ferriss, which talks about everything under the sun. And you can just, you find so many interesting people. And also in terms of Twitter, most of the guests are worth a follow on Twitter. So mm, um, yeah. that's, and they have, many of them have wonderful books or their own websites or podcasts that are worth checking out. Another one is Farnham Street. Both the podcast and the blog have very thought-provoking articles that really make you think outside of your normal comfort zone. And also another one I've kind of started listening to in the last year is Modern Wisdom as well. Mm. Yeah, so these are great, uh, great podcasts. Um, Farnham Street is one that I 
have listened to on and off over the years. And every time I listen to it, I'm just amazed at how good those conversations are. And it started with FS Doc blog, which is Farnham Street's blog. Incredible run by Shane Parrish. So um, I've got a podcast for listeners and it's a bit of a niche one. It's, it's industry focused podcast by the Motley Fool US. Pardon me. And the industry focused podcast, basically every week, uh, every day of the week, they actually have different co-hosts on who talk about one industry. So it might be companies in say payments space. So like Visa and MasterCard and Square. Do you want to learn about those companies? Well, you follow the Wednesday show because that's the financials day. Or if it might be consumer goods, if you want to learn about what makes Costco so good versus say Walmart or Amazon or whatever. Um, so really interesting podcast, good for investors. And I don't necessarily, you know, with all of these things, I don't necessarily hear what they say and then go out and buy the shares or the companies that they recommend or talk about. It's actually just an opportunity just to learn about companies. So if there's an industry focused podcast, for example, on Square, and I'm not familiar with Square's business, that's a great way just to get a very high level understanding of, of what they do and, um, and and the key drivers of that. I've also got the Tim Ferriss podcast here as well. Um, it's, it's something that I've started listening to more recently, um, in particular, the one that you shared with me, Kate, which was basically how he built his um, his podcast empire. So fantastic stuff. Um, what else is on your list? Anything else? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was Aussie Firebug's blog. Um, we had him on the podcast a few months or weeks back. I don't know. The time's flying in lockdown. Not even lockdown now, so. Um, yeah, so that's another great resource because he's actually writing from an Australian perspective about his path to financial independence, but he actually breaks down on a monthly basis his entire portfolio, which just having a little bit of a sticky beak, you're not necessarily just um, taking what he does and putting it into practice, but you're just being able to read how someone builds their portfolio over many, many years is a really interesting thing because we often don't have those conversations. People don't talk about their exact portfolio construction and how they allocate their assets, um, especially once they're Many of us will maybe talk about how we use $1,000, but when you're talking about hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, it's a very different approach and not many people are willing to talk about that. So I definitely recommend having a look at his blogs and some of his monthly investment reports, really. Yeah, that's Matt from Aussie Firebug. Uh, check it out. We did an interview with him recently, as Kate said. A really, really thought-provoking. So wonderful, wonderful guest on the show and contributor to financial literacy, generally speaking. Um Switching gears back to um, kind of the, the, the nitty gritty of investing, um, there's, a, there's a website called Ticker, so T-I-K-R, T-I-K-R, so not to be confused with the Australian TV channel, which is Ticker, uh, this is T-I-K-R, just the four letters, and it's a US-based thing, but they, what they do is, um, we've actually got a, a like, a, it's kind of like a referral code, but we don't earn anything for it, it's just a way to actually register without going through the wait list. Um, if you go to Ticker, what you can do and what we do and our analyst team do is we use it for all the data. So you can log in um, and you'll be able to see, you know, like 10 years worth of financial statements for say, I don't know, Telstra or Afterpay or whatever it is, the company that you're looking at. And it works for Australian companies. It works for US companies and a bunch of other companies around the world. And it's super powerful. Like you can, this, this kind of thing normally it would, five years ago would have cost thousands of dollars to access. But for some reason, Ticket can do it for free for now. So like, that's why I'm saying like, go and use it now while it's available to you. Um, it's a really, really powerful platform. Um, yeah, check it out. If you're interested in like seeing the numbers, getting the, 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 the announcements from companies, like if you have US companies, sometimes it can be really hard to follow multiple companies in one go uh, and get their announcements, like their quarterlies and that. But you can get that in there. You can get the analyst transcript so you don't have to sit on the call. You can actually just press command F and search for if someone on the Microsoft quarterly calls spoke about LinkedIn, like you could just search for LinkedIn and see what the analyst questions were. So fantastic platform. Uh, check it out. Wonderful. And probably one more I just want to mention is we've talked about it before, but fund manager newsletters and just signing up to get a feel of how they write and explore their investments. I mean, some that I follow personally is like Lake House Capital or Forager Funds Management or even Platinum. Uh, and just most of the time you won't even invest in these funds or they might even be wholesale funds that you can't, but they'll often share their top performers and a little bit about their investment process along the way. And it's just, it gives you a different approach to how people think about investing, especially when they're building quite large positions in companies. 
absolutely. And yeah, I follow each of them too. And I think they're great reads, particularly Platinum. If you're interested in like Asia and investing throughout Asia, I think they've got some great stuff on that. That's probably my go-to for that topic. Um, the final two things that I'll just throw out are investment uh, memberships and investment newsletters. Obviously, we've got an investment membership. We've got a few of them and a lot of our listeners have joined already. But um, when I was starting out, I remember that it was basically the Motley Fool that gave me all the insights I needed to learn on investing. And had it not been for their memberships and, and what have you, like you can say what you want about the marketing or whatever, but had it not been for their memberships, I wouldn't have um, learned a lot. So um, we've seen a lot more memberships come to Australia since, since then. And, you know, one of them being our memberships, but um, if there's even like free versions of things. So another one would be uh, straw man. So straw man, I'll just say, sorry, just on the investment memberships, just one final caveat there is just be careful. Like not, not everyone aligns with your philosophy. So be sure to make sure that you understand who runs the newsletters and who runs the membership sites before you get involved with them. There are a lot of kind of spruikers in the market, not just for memberships, but as investors in general. That could be a caveat for everything. But um, just keep that in mind. Make sure they have an AFSL uh, printed on their website, etc. And some of the but, memberships um, are more designed for um, self-managed super funds and retirees. They might be mentioning and recommending investments that for a 20 or 30 year old might not be the most appropriate thing for your portfolio at this stage. And then there'll be a lot of, and uh, yeah, well said. And then there'll be a lot of things like trading ones and trading might not be your cup of tea. It's definitely not mine. Um, so I wouldn't sign up for one of those. I'd just sign up for one that teaches you about investing in businesses. So you can understand businesses rather than say um, one that focuses on like technical analysis. That's not really, you know, I don't think that's something that I need to go go into. But um, yeah, so the final thing, and this is just a, it's a free tool started by a friend of ours, a um, friend who's been on the show, Andrew Page. Um, he started Strawman, strawman.com, I believe is the URL. And it's a, it's a really simple kind of effective platform where anyone can go on and they can get fake money, like a fake portfolio, and they can say what they wanted to invest in, right? But when you do that, you have to say why you're investing in something. And that's a powerful thing. So this is a free platform for most users. What you could do is you could say, oh, I want to buy, I don't know, Commonwealth Bank shares. And then you'd have to put down what we call a thesis or like just like a little thing to say, I'm buying it because of this reason. And what makes it so powerful is once you're a user, you can see what other people are doing and you can follow people. It's like a social platform for investing. So really cool. Uh, check it out. Okay, that's a great list. So we've got a, a fantastic list of things from our community here, from podcasts like Money Smart, Passive Investing Australia. Ben said Google's a great resource. All of these things. Um, you've come out with ShareSight, Reading Widely, Firebug, podcasts. I've come out with some Twitter handles, the ticker terminal, um, and, and investment website. So there's so much to go on. Um, if you're new to investing and you're looking to get started, or if you just want to learn more and you want to follow people on any of these social platforms, check it out. Uh, it's a fantastic list of resources here that will get you on your way. So Kate, as always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone.